Hey guys, coming here with the trailer and today we're going to be taking a look at the Reese Dual Cam 2 weight distribution hitch. Well, if you're towing your trailer or maybe you're picking up a brand new trailer and you're noticing that your truck really just can't handle it, you're getting quite a bit of sag, maybe your front uh, axle starting to kind of lift up a little bit and you're just not getting that traction or that braking power that you normally have without all that weight on the back of your truck that's where a weight distribution hitch like our Reese dual cam 2 is going to be the solution for you our cam brackets easily just clamp on using some bolts and nuts so you don't have to worry about drilling into your frame which can take quite a bit of time trying to drill through this thick metal the cams themselves can easily be adjusted to fine-tune your towing experience that way you have your trailer level and you get that ride quality that you're really looking for the cam itself so the bar actually is free unlike other designs and it allows it to kind of pop up over the cam and then as it pops over during those tight turns or in a sway event it's going to get further and further up this bar and as it gets further up there's going to be more tension forcing it back so that it gets back over to the hump of our spring bar here and back straight in line. There's three different uh, tongue weight capacities for our spring bars here. So we're gonna make sure that you actually weigh your trailer's tongue weight before you go ahead and purchase your hitch because you wanna make sure that you're getting the correct one that's gonna fully lift up your trailer and distribute that weight evenly. Um, when it comes to the actual head assembly, it does not come with a shank. So you will need to also purchase the correct shank you may need to rise or a drop depending on your setup for your truck versus your trailer so you're going to want to make sure that you go ahead and measure the difference between your hitch on your truck and your coupler on your trailer for added adjustability you can also fine tune exactly the tilt up to 15 degrees uh, of your hitch head here all you have to do is simply loosen up your bolt here and then you can kind of move it back or forth and grip in with those teeth on our brackets as far as installation goes, it is pretty straightforward. Uh, the only comment I would make is just uh, in the directions, it tells you to get your brackets all in place and tighten down and then go ahead and throw on your cams. But in my opinion, it's a little bit easier if you kind of just have it real loose, put your cam on and then slide your bar over and make sure that you have it level because in the directions, they're gonna tell you to line up this bracket right here with the top of your spring bar and you can get it level, but once you start tightening this down, you might have some issues where it's just a little bit off. So it's a lot easier just getting it in place with that, and you can really see that it's actually there. But let me go ahead and show you how we did that. So before you decide which weight distribution hitch is going to be right for your trailer, you're going to want to first know exactly what your tongue weight is. To do that, you can either take 10 to 15 percent of your gross vehicle weight rating, or you can get a much more accurate uh, account of what your actual tongue weight is using one of our e-trailer tongue weight scales and all we're going to simply do is just take the weight off of our jack and put it onto our scale and as we start taking that weight off of the jack you can see we're sitting right around 500 pounds of tongue weight now our trailer isn't really loaded so you're going to want to take into account anything that you would typically load into your trailer just to make sure that you have an accurate tongue weight because when you go camping, you usually store quite a bit of stuff inside your camper. We're gonna take some measurements just to see where our factory ride height is. Right now on level ground, we're looking right at 42. And up front, we're at 42 as well. So now with the weight of our trailer on our hitch here, we're gonna go ahead and take some additional measurements just to see how much sag we're really getting right now. So in the rear, we're looking at 41 and an eighth, which means that sagged us down about seven eighths of an inch. Front, we're looking at 42 and an eighth, which means we only raised up an eighth of an inch, which all in all is pretty good. Uh, it's super important that we keep as close as we can to our factory right head up front because this is the majority of your braking power up front. And also your headlights, if they start getting up too high, aren't really gonna display the road quite as clearly for you. So our next step's gonna be measuring the coupler height and it looks like we're sitting right at 22 and a quarter maybe just an eighth of an inch higher so now now that we have that measurement we're going to go ahead and we're going to stick our shank into 
our hitch on our truck. Now this system does not come with a shank. You will have to purchase this separately. We have multiple options here at e-trailer, but we're gonna be using another Reese today. We're gonna slide that in. And this system also, because it doesn't come with a shank, will not come with a hitch pin. So you will have to get a pin and clip as well. So there's gonna be a separate bag that's gonna come with two bolts, two uh, washers that'll say it's an adjustable washer. It's got these little teeth on it. There'll be a spacer, two nuts, and two lock washers. And that's what's gonna hold your head of your hitch onto your shank. Now, our next step is going to be making sure that our hitch ball is an inch higher than that coupler height that we had, which was two and a, uh, 22 and a quarter inches. So to make this easier, I'm just gonna hold that up. And I'm gonna try and get us as close to 23 and a quarter, which looks like it's the second hold down. So now I'm gonna get some of my hardware ready. What I'm gonna do is, I know there's a bunch of play in between my hitch head and my shank. So I'm gonna take this spacer and I'm gonna place that inside to kind of eat up some of that space. And then I'm gonna take my smaller bolt, it's your four and a half, and I'm gonna try and get this kind of set up in place. And get that kind of poked through. This is uh, definitely a good spot to have an extra set of hands just because that spacer isn't gonna wanna stay there for you. And on some applications, you may not be able to get that spacer in on the bottom hole. And Reese has said that it is okay. If you can only get the top, just go ahead and cut the spacer in half. All right, now that I got that slid in place, I'm gonna take my big bolt through. But before I do that, I wanna get this adjustable washer on there and I'm gonna make sure that I have my teeth facing up against the teeth on here. So we'll slide our bolt through. We'll slide right through. And then we can go ahead and put our other washer in place. And I'm just gonna throw on our washer, or locking washers and our nuts just so that we don't have this fall off here. All right, now here's where we can go ahead to adjust Make sure that we're at the right height. So right about there is 23 and a quarter. So the next step is going to be inserting our spring bars and making sure the measurement for those is correct so that we have the tension correct. Um, there's gonna be a chart in your instructions what will state three different coupler styles. There'll be A, B, and C. A being if the coupler is mounted from the bottom of the frame, B being mounted to the frame, but with a six inch frame or C, like what we have here where it's a five inch thick frame and our coupler mounted up top. So on that chart, there's gonna be a bunch of different coupler heights. Our coupler height is falling into the 22 to 24 inch uh, height range. So if we look at that and then look at coupler C, we're going to see that when our spring bars are on, the distance from them being up like held up to the ground is going to be eight and a half inches. So if I measure this right now, I should have eight and a half inches. If not, then I'll have to adjust the head of my hitch here. It looks like I'm sitting right just barely above eight and a half inches which is right where I should be based on that chart. If I wasn't and I needed to make some adjustments, this is where we would kind of move our hitch head up or down because this has about a 15 degree radius that you can kind of adjust it to and that's where those teeth come into play because that's what is gonna lock it into place as I move it up or down. So now I'm gonna go ahead and just tighten it down and then we'll torque it down to the specifications listed in your instruction manual. All right, that one's down. So now we're going to loosely put together our brackets. We're gonna take our upper cam weld mitt, which is this part right here, and we're just gonna slap that right on our frame. Uh, we won't know exactly what position this is gonna be in until we get our spring bars in place, but um, you may run into some fitment issues. On the other side, we have a breakaway switch and a ground that are right in the spot where our 
Uh, bracket's gonna need to really sit, so I've pulled those off for now, but we're gonna get this rolling right now. We're gonna take our four inch bolt, since we have a two inch frame, there is a three and a half inch bolt if you have a one and a half inch frame, so you will need to measure that. Just find out which bolt's the correct size for you. I'm gonna put the bolt head side towards the outside with our nut on the inside. And I'm just gonna hand tighten that for now because we still have to put our other bolt in down at the bottom. So now that we have our bracket loosely in place, I'm gonna go ahead and stick our bar in. We'll pull that up and then we want that line right here. We want the center of this bracket to match up with the center of the top of our little loop right here on our spring bar. So I'm going to slide that until I get centered, which it feels right about there. And now we can go ahead and we're going to start adding on our other bolts. So since I use that four inch bolt, I'm going to use my three and a half inch bolt down at the bottom. There's going to be two black washers that are kind of bowed one way that have teeth on them. We're going to slide our bolt in on the back side here on the inside of our trailer frame. We want to get that as close up as we can because there's a bunch of different holes here just depending on the length of your trailer frame. But we're going to slide that through with our washer teeth facing our bracket match that up over on this side and I'm just going to hand screw that in for now. Don't want it too tight just yet because we have one other bracket we're going to slide in here. And you may have to actually just kind of take it off if it's fighting you too much. So we're going to take this other weld mint bracket and we're going to slide that into place which Honestly, it'd be a big hassle and fight to do it that way, even though the directions say to do it. After that, we're just gonna go ahead and pull that bolt back off. It'd be much easier to slide it in. So I'm just hand tightening this down. I'm gonna double check my spring bars one last time, make sure this bracket's exactly where I need it. Which it looks like it kind of slid just a bit as I was tightening this, so let's move it. So now I'm just going to go back and forth between the top and the bottom here. I'm going to make sure that I'm getting both kind of tightened up evenly because we don't want our bar on the other side to bend one way or the other. We want it straight down. But we're going to snug this up nice and tight. Like I said, I don't want to see that bar start to bend in under the frame. We want to make sure that we're keeping it just nice and tight and straight with our trailer frame. So our next step is going to be dropping in our carriage bolts. And as you can see, there's two different spots up top and as well below. We want to get it as close in as we can uh, with our two inch frame here. We can't get that first slot, so we're going to stick it into the second one. And if you look at the carriage bolt, it's square up top, so it's going to sit in to that hole there and then round it on the bottom weldment so that it can accept it. So. We're gonna stick those through. We'll take our conical washer. We want our teeth sticking up so that they bite into the bottom weldment. So we'll slide our washer up and then we're gonna put on our nut. And then we're just gonna repeat the same process over here. And once I have these fully tightened down with my wrench, I'm gonna come back and torque them down to the settings that are also listed in your instructions. All right, now we can go ahead and tighten up our bolts and then torque everything back down. So our next step is going to be taking our bolt on cam and actually installing it here on our bracket. And we're going to take our one and a quarter inch bolts and slide on our lock washer. And that's how we are going to attach it. We're going to use two. There'll be four included in your kit so that you can use two on each side. So to determine the placement of this, we're going to actually have to hold it up there. And we're going to want to lift up our spring bar because we want the top of our spring bar to be 
four inch, uh, four inches below the top of our cam here. So we'll take our tape measure and put it from the center and right about where I have it looks to be good. We can take a better measurement once we have it kind of in place. So I'm just going to stick one bolt in for now. Make this a little bit easier and free up one of my hands. So just double check in. I'm going to kind of pull that out just a bit so I can get it right on the center. We're right at four inches for the top of our cam versus the top of our spring bar. Now for bolt placement, uh, the directions list that you can use uh, pretty much any one of these holes except for if you have your um, bottom frame bolt coming through it. So right here we have our bottom frame bolt so I cannot use this hole. I'm going to have to go up one and put it right here for our bottom. And we'll just hand tighten that in for now and then use our wrenches to snug that up and torque it down. That one's good. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing over on the other side. So now we're gonna take our pins off. Uh, you'll wanna pull this little ring out and we can pull our pin out. And then we're gonna try and get our bar, or our spring bars up onto our holders here. You may have to lift up a little bit. So I'm gonna use my jack because I can't quite fully get up onto that cam. So we'll go ahead. Lift up just a bit, give us some more room here. Get it lined up. If you notice that you're not really lining up with your bracket and you need to readjust it, uh, much easier way than the instructions really tell you to do. Uh, loosen up your bolts and then stick your cam back up on here with just one bolt and you can kind of slide that around and make sure you get it lined up nice and tight. That way it's actually where it should be. Uh, honestly, they should just have it that way in the instructions, but they don't. So that's the way we're uh, originally following it. But now we can go ahead, we'll take our tool, pop it right into place, and then we can pop our spring bars back on. That in place. We'll drop our pin in, and we'll take our clip. We're gonna slide that through our hole in our pin and then pop the ring back around. You wanna make sure that ring comes all the way over, that way it engages the pin and can't fall out. Our trailer hooked up and our weight distribution hitch activated. I'm gonna go ahead and take some measurements. Now before we were at 42 inches and now we are sitting right at 41 and a half, so it only dropped us a half inch. Front we were at 42 inches as well to start and it looks like we're at 42 inches. Well, I think that about does it for today's look at the Reese Dual Cam 2 weight distribution hitch. My name's Kevin. Thanks for watching.